Hello and welcome back to my studio, The Pottery Corner, on the south coast of England near Chichester. Welcome back everybody. Uh, today we're going to do a tutorial on how to decorate um, the deer mugs. So uh, my regular viewers will have seen uh, these coming out of the kiln and I've spoken um, about the technique that I've used to actually decorate these mugs. Um, and, and during the kiln opening asked you if you'd like to see how to do it. Well, it's a bit of a silly question. Of course you want to see how to do it. Um, so I am going to show you how I decorate my mugs with this design using slip and underglaze in different ways. So these are my mugs and um, I'll show you the equipment that we're going to use. First and foremost, I am using uh, vinyl stencils. So these vinyl stencils have been um, supplied to me by my friend, my very good friend, my very good pottery friend, Karen. Uh, and Karen runs a company called Griffin Designs and she works with vinyl for um, banners and for vehicle designs, etc. Um, but in as a sideline, um, she also makes these for pottery. And if you have a look at Karen's Etsy shop, um, and I'll stick a link in the description below and also pop it on the screen. Um, Karen has done these sheets for me and indeed has put them up onto her Etsy shop so that you can purchase your own. What I've done is I've just taken the positive image out of this one so that you can see that you can use these images both ways. So there's a negative image and a positive image. So the positive Im image has just come out of this section here and this one I've not taken out yet. Um, and then you can use them both ways around. So this particular mug uses the negative image and the other uses the positive image. Um, so you're getting double bang for your buck on these sheets um, of vinyl stencils. You can use them both way round and I'll show you how to do that. They are very inexpensive and Karen is such a sweetheart to um, do these for me so that we have the uh, the companion stickers available on her Etsy shop. So do go across and take a look at those. So we're obviously going to need some vinyl stickers. They don't have to be um, dear. There are other motifs that Karen has in her shop. So as I say, go over and visit Karen's shop and see what takes your fancy. Um, you will need some coloured slip. Uh, I have lots and lots of coloured slips. I seem to be able to produce every colour that uh, I have in underglaze in my slips as well. So you will need some coloured slip. If you don't know how to do that, there is a video on my channel of how to make your own slip. So head across to there. I'll stick a card up and I'll put the video at the end for you to have a look at. Um, so I've picked out a few colours of slip that I'm going to use. Um, I keep separate slip brushes. You don't have to, but I find it's easier to keep slip brushes separate to glaze brushes. I use these paintbrush style brushes for slip. They're very in inexpensive and I just keep them in a separate pot marked up as slip brushes for the students. Um, you are going to need glaze brushes um, when we come to doing some of the detail. Um, in underglaze on the um, deer motifs themselves. So the deer motifs have been underglazed um, using sponging techniques and various techniques which I'll go through when we get there. And then um, the, the tree, the silver birch motif is an underglaze transfer. Um, so again I've used underglaze transfers before in some of my tutorials. Uh, the Skyline Luminaire tutorial goes through how to apply uh, underglaze transfers in more detail than we will go into on this particular video. Uh, but the, the transfer that I'm using has come from um, Ceramica and again I'll link the Ceramica website in the description box for you to find. But it comes in a sheet like this so you can see that you've got five uh, you've got five tree scenes that will go round a mug. So each sheet will give you five mugs or whatever you happen to be making, vases or whatever, um, and you just cut them. But please, please make sure that you keep them away from water 
So all the time I'm working with wet stuff, whether it be underglazes or slip or whatever, I am not going to get my underglaze transfer anywhere near the water because it will ruin them. So please keep them separate. I'm using two designs. The first one is um, silver birch and this one I believe is called oaks. Um, I'll check that and put it on the screen. Um, this one I've cut off of a sheet um, and this is a two-tone transfer so it's got black and grey so it gives you uh, the perspective of the trees in the distance. Um, so that's what I'm going to be using for the underglaze transfer section on the mugs. For the actual deer detail on the mugs, I have chosen a palette of um, underglazes. You could use slip or you could use underglaze, whichever is your preference. Um, so I've just picked out a palette of colours that are going to be suitable for the deer that I'm planning to put on there. So I have all of those in the little underglaze pots. Um, and I also have a artist palette or a couple of artist palettes. They're really cheap um, just to put my underglazes in. And this one was already ready mixed from the last time that I did it. So I've just refreshed the underglaze in there with a little bit of water just to bring it back to life. So that's basically all the equipment that I'm going to need. Of course, the other thing that I need are the mugs. So I have thrown these mugs and put the handles on so they're finished from the point of view of being thrown and turned and handle, handles applied. Um, I've started uh, popping the slip on just so that I have the various stages of um, how to do the decorating. So some of them have got green slip on. I'm actually going to do a background colour of, of green on, the, um, on this style. And then some of them have got blue on, which is the undergarments uh, for this particular design. So um, you'll need some mugs basically, or vases or whatever that you would like to put uh, your transfers on. Um, I'm going to, as I say, I'm going to actually have a green background on this design um, because I quite like the way that the green comes out on the mugs. Um, it's a really pretty um, green slip. Uh, so for this particular mug, I am going to use the green slip background mugs. Um, so I've applied two coats of green slip across the whole of the mug. Um, so they are now ready to go in terms of decorating. So the first thing to remember is that you're always working backwards with the design, which is quite difficult sometimes to get your head round what comes first. Does the slip come first? Does the transfer come first? Does the deer come first? So on this particular one, now that I have my background colour on, this has been left clay body colour, um, but with my background colour of green, I'm going to add the transfer first. And then once the transfer is on, um, I'm going to add the masks. So these are masks that will go over the surface of the transfer so that I can put the underglaze detail of the deer over the top of the transfer. So the first thing I'm going to do is pop the transfer on select which mug I want to do and I'll reset the camera and uh, bring you down with me so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay so I've applied my slip, it's dry, um, the piece is still leather hard um, so it's still workable um, but I don't want it to be too soft. If you're applying your slip and trying to work with your piece um, wet be very careful because obviously adding the slip will add moisture back onto your piece. I've just grabbed a couple of pieces of waffle foam. I find these really useful that I can lay my piece down without it getting damaged on my whirler. Um, I have cut out my strip of birch underglaze uh, transfer which I'm keeping as I said well away from the water on the table. Um, I've also got the little bits and pieces that have come off from the previous time that I used it because quite often if I'm going round a handle it's quite handy to have the little pieces. So I've got those. I've got a little bowl of water and a couple of sponges. Um, and when I did this last time I found that I rather liked the design where the trees were not all the way round. 
So if I show you this one, you can see that the transfer has just been applied in the way that it comes on the sheet. There's quite a lot of tree, there's quite a lot going on in that design. Um, and when I ran out of transfer and decided that I needed to split it up, actually I thought it was better. So I've cut the sheet of underglaze transfer and left gaps in between, which I think is better. So that is the way that I'm going to do it. So I'm just going to cut up the pieces um, and then start applying from there. Just placing my design around the mug so that I can see how much of the transfer I actually need to use. I need another piece. And when I'm cutting this transfer, I'm being mindful of where the, um, the design goes on the sheet. So I'm not cutting them dead straight, I'm just cutting them at an angle where the branches go. Um, and then I'm going to decide whereabouts I want to put them. I mean, obviously this transfer is not as big as this mug, so I need to decide whether I want the um, birches to start at the bottom and then put some form of sponged texture on the top here to show that the, um, the trees are in leaf or whether I want to actually just make a feature of the middle section of the mug so we'll put it between where the handle is so that I've got a border of the green slip top and bottom. Obviously personal preference entirely up to you this is the way that I will do it because I think it looks better with a border so I'm just going to place the first piece of underglaze transfer onto the mug hold it with my hand where I want it to be and then with a sponge that has been wrung out so that there's almost no water in it at all. So as much of the water out as you possibly can. I'm just going to tack this down onto the um, surface of the mug. Um, again, my slip is quite dry. So you might find that your slip's a little bit wetter than mine, in which case your transfer will stick on that much better. Okay, so I've just tacked that on that bottom edge and now I can apply a little bit more water. I don't want to waterlog it. I want to just make sure that it's actually on the surface of my pot to start with, get it where I want it to be. Okay, and then I'm going to add more water as we go. Okay. All right, so that's on. And then I'm just going to add a bit more water to make sure that it actually, the actual underglaze uh, print transfers over onto the pot. Um, so I'm making sure that all of that tissue is wet. Okay, so that's fine. Um, I'm keeping the water side on this side of the table and the dry side on this side of the table and using a hand cloth in between. I don't want to get this underglaze transfer wet because it will ruin it. Um, so now I'm just going to decide where the next bit goes, leaving a gap in the middle between the trees. Quite like the I liked the gaps that I left on the one that I did before, so I'm going to use that same um, process and I'm just making sure that what I'm putting on here is straight so that I don't have wonky trees. And again, I'm going to hold it with my finger and just apply with a sponge with very, very little water in it just to tack it into place in the first instance. And then I'm going to carry on applying the transfers all the way around, you get the idea. So I'll speed this bit up for you.
now I'm just going to go over the transfers again with just a little bit more water. I just want to make sure that that print has gone onto the slip and isn't still on the tissue paper. So I'm just applying a little bit more water to each section. You can kind of see um, when you use it where it has and where it hasn't transferred on some of the uh, darker parts of the underglaze. You can see that it's not quite come off the paper. So I'm just going to add a little bit more water as I go round. I don't want it swimming in water, but I do want it to be wet. And I'm using an up and down motion with the sponge rather than a, a, a swiping motion because it will uh, it will smudge the underglaze underneath. Right, okay. So I'm quite happy that that is, that is done. Just going to leave that just for a minute just to think about what it's doing. Okay, um, so we've got the underglaze transfer on. Obviously, now that I've added a bit more water, the mug is becoming rehydrated again. Um, so you need to be careful. I'm going to have to use a rounder on this to re-round it. Um, OK, so I'm just going to leave that just for a moment. Um, and I'm going to have a look at my um, vinyl stickers. So as I say, th this is the way that I'm going to use them on this particular mug. Um, so that I can sponge on the different colours of underglaze um, like I've done here. So the stickers, um, as I say, are in two parts and you basically, very carefully, they are sticky, uh, release them from their backing sheet. And as I say, that's the way I'm going to use these ones, but I will use these on the other design. So I'm just going to stick that onto the back of the paper um, just so that I can save it for later. So I'm going to be using the masks on this side. I'm just going to trim some of this um, background off of here because I don't need all of it. Um, so I'm just going to take a little bit of that excess vinyl off of there. Trying not to leave myself too shallow on some of these join lines. And again, I'm going to choose my design. So I have left hand facing stags and right hand facing stags and the same with the does. So I can decide my design um, by using them a different way around. This one's actually showing the other way around. So uh, we'll have a look at which way we want them to face. Right, and just coming back to my um, underglaze transfer, I'm quite happy that that's now transferred. So I'm just going to pick up the edge turn the transfer back on itself and just gently remove it. Uh, and now I need to be mindful that I don't smudge that underglaze with my hand. Um, so I'm being careful not to touch it. Um, if I can get away with it, I don't want to smudge it at this stage. So I'm just peeling back the uh, tissue paper. You could use the edge of a knife if you haven't got a fingernail. Um, that one is a bit smudged, as you can probably see uh, from adding the water. So don't put too much water on because it does smudge the transfers. Um, so I'm quite happy with those. And then I just need to decide where I'm going to put my design. Right, OK, so I'm going to have the stag at the front and then I'm going to have the does following behind. So one stag and two does. Um, so I'm going to carefully remove the backing paper uh, from this vinyl sticker. Uh, it is very sticky when you take it off, so um, just be ready to place it where you want it. Uh, just remove the backing paper carefully. Um, as I was saying earlier, I'm just being careful of the um, antlers because obviously those are the detail that's going to be... Uh, most likely to get damaged when I tear this off of here. So I'm just being careful when I'm peeling it. Um, get rid of the backing paper. You can use the backing paper obviously to stick the um, positive uh, 
motifs onto, which is the best thing to do rather than sticking them onto the back. I'm sure Karen's shouting at the camera saying, don't stick them on the back. Uh, so you can use the, um, the paper to stick your positive, the, you know, the shiny side of the paper to stick your positive images onto. Uh, as I say, they are sticky when they come off, so you have to be really careful with them. Uh, try not to lose the stick because you need it. Um, and then kind of work out where it's going to go on your piece. If it sticks to its itself, like it's just done there, just unstick it and then just carefully work out where your image is going and then get it actually onto the pot. And off of your finger. Which isn't easy. It, it, they do go, I mean, you know, you just have to spend a little bit of time just um, manipulating them. Try not to lose the stick. As you can see, this antler section has just um, stuck across, so I'm just going to unstick that. That's better. And again, this back foot has just joined itself. So they are a bit fiddly, but they do do the job, so stick with them. Okay, I'm just going to come forward a little bit from the trees so that he's kind of standing more in the foreground. Once I've got him where I want him, I'm going to press the stick down onto the mug um, and do that so that there is no um, air held underneath. So I'm just going to be careful just to make sure that this sticker is flat on the surface. If it's not flat on the surface, then obviously your underglazes are going to go underneath the image. So you don't want that. So try and get it so that it sits without having any wear that it can go underneath. The more you fiddle with them, the more that they lose their stick, which is another thing to watch out for. And if you have a bit that just will not go down without a crinkle in it, I find the easiest way to deal with it is just to cut it um, so that it will lay flat. Um, and you won't actually see that join there. It's just very slightly overlapped because of course I'm trying to put a flat thing onto a curved surface. So sometimes it's easier to cut the transfer. Okay, so I'm happy that that's kind of where it needs to be. This antler's not sitting quite right. So again, I'm just going to cut through there and just let that sit better there. Okay, so once I've got it to there, I then use my rubber kidney just to um, get this transfer down, the stencil down onto the surface of the clay. Make sure that there aren't any places for the underglaze to make its way underneath, actually on the image that I'm going to be painting. So I'm just going to spend a minute just making sure that that image is down. And then I'm going to apply the other two images and then I'll come back and we'll do the next stage. So that's the third image on. Just making sure that that is stuck. Now on this um, design, once I'd stuck the um, underglaze transfer on, I then wiped the underglaze transfer away from where the deers were. Um, so in other words, in the portion um, that I can see. So like here, I'm just going to wipe away the majority of the underglaze transfer just because I don't want to be able to see it uh, through on my design. So I'm just going to take away using a sponge the portions that I don't want underneath on the deer, which is really easy. You just use a wet sponge, make sure you don't get it on anything you do want to keep, because uh, otherwise it's going to be gone. And I'm just gently rubbing the underglaze off where I don't want it 
to be. So I'll be left with the uh, underglaze transfer removed from those places. I'm turning my sponge around so I'm not shifting that um, underglaze colour actually onto anything else that I don't want it to be on. Being mindful also of the layer of slip that we are working on. So as you can see, I've just taken the underglaze transfer off. I can just go around and just check that it's all off where you don't want it to be. It won't really matter because obviously we're going to be sponging over this design in a minute. Um, but I do want to just make sure that there isn't um, the, the remainder of the trees so we've now got it to this stage. So we have slip, underglaze, and then we've popped the stencils over the top and taken the underglaze off where we don't want it. Okay. Um, and now I'm just going to spend a minute mixing up the colours that I'm going to use um, with my underglazes. And I'm going to re-round this mug just by popping a flower pot in the top of it because it's, it's coming away from from uh, true round because it's been uh, mucked about with with slips and what have you so I'm just going to stick a flower pot in it just for a moment just to let that sit and I'm going to spend a little minute just popping the colours that I'm going to use into my palette. I'm just loosening some of these um, underglazes with water because I don't want them to be too um, definite so I'm just almost like a, a watercolour I am just thinning down my underglaze till I get it to the consistency that I want. I don't want them to be too thick. So I've just uh, mixed up my underglazes. So we're ready to apply. Um, I have just grabbed myself a clean palette. So I'm going to transfer the colour uh, that I want to use from this box uh, into this box, some of it, so that I'm taking each colour uh, into the box and then I can mix them in there but still keep my original colours for when I want to do uh, the next mug so I can keep a sort of a, a similar colour palette across the mugs that I'm going to make. Uh, so. I'll keep this one as my master box. So it's almost like watercolour painting really. You want your underglazes to be fairly um, fairly fluid. I've missed one, this one. This is the darkest or one of the darkest colours. Uh, so I'm not going to need to use quite as much of that. Right, okay, let's get rid of that out of the way. So, um, application. Clean down my workstation before I start. Um, again, I'm going to use the waffle foam uh, on the mug just so that I can use it in the plane that I want to use it in. Um, it is tricky sometimes to make sure that the stencils stay down. Um, and this is because my mug is quite dry. Yours might not be so dry, in which case it will be easier um, to keep your stencil on your work. Um, I'm just going to have to use my fingers and just make sure that I hold the stencil down when I'm doing that section. Um, so uh, when I did these last time, you can see that the, the deers are slightly different colours. Um, and I prefer this one, which is lighter with a little bit more of the fawn colour in it. Um, so I'm going to try and replicate uh, that type of colour. Um, I'm just going to sponge it on using, um, I mean, this is just a throwing sponge, but I don't want to put too much on all at one go. So I'm using a piece of um, kitchen towel just to um, lighten it up so that it looks more sponged. Um, and I'm just going to go over the areas like so. And then I have a, a little bit of raw sponge. I'm just going to pop a little bit of black down over the hooves and just on the tips of the ears. And then um, 
I'm just going to dot the underglaze out of there and then pick up some of this more orange colour and actually pop that over the top. Um, as you can see, I'm trying to add texture to it by sponging it instead of painting it. It's just not quite so um, so thick. This is the lighter colour going in now, which is the more sort of straw-like colour. I'm just going to come up over the head. It's quite wet, this particular one. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm happy with the colour and where the colour is. Um, and at the end, I'm actually going to dot on some white, or this is actually ivory beige, um, spots on there so that it looks like a fallow deer. Uh, interestingly enough, we, me and my sister uh, went to our Pilates class this morning and on the way back from Pilates, we had a whole herd of fallow deer crossing the road just as we just as we came up to um, to the turning into my road. So it was lovely to see them. And of course, then it uh, reminded me that I needed to do this particular video. So that was rather fortuitous that that happened today. So again, I'm trying not to add too much depth of colour, um, but making sure that I have coated I mean, you could be pedantic and use lots of different sponges if you wanted, but I find it's just as easy to uh, wipe the sponge out on a piece of kitchen towel. I quite like them to have a sort of slightly darker back and a little bit of black on the ears. Right, so we're now on the stag, making sure that I'm covering his antlers. I'm going to give him slightly darker legs and a little bit of black on his back and up into his antlers and again you'll see that I'm dabbing I'm not wiping I'm dabbing the sponge and cleaning the sponge on this piece of kitchen roll um, so I'm going to pick up the lighter colour orangey tone over him just making sure that I have coated all the transfer I think you can kind of see that they are slightly different colors I don't mind that I quite like them to be slightly different it gives them a bit of a personality and you can see uh, the stun the sponge texture is kind of mottling which is what I'm what I'm what I'm going for. So I'm looking for it to be slightly mottled because it gives you a nice um, a nice finish. I show you this one. You can see you get this sort of mottling on there, which is really very nice. So it makes them stand out a little bit more, and it doesn't make them look like a flat thing. It gives them a bit more three dimension when they've got sort of darker bits and lighter bits. Okay, so um, I'm quite happy with that. I'm just going to let that dry for a minute. So I've just mixed up a little bit of the um, ivory beige. I have actually made that a little bit thicker um, because obviously it's a light colour going over a dark colour so it can be a little bit more opaque. Um, and I'm going to pick up my piece and just dot uh, a few little lighter patches across the back of the dough. Just a little bit, just to break up that colour. Do the same on the others. I'm letting them go over the top of where the sticker is going to come off so they don't look too uniform. I don't want them to look placed. And again on the stag. So I think those are fairly fairly done. Just try and put some tiny dots on if I can. They don't look quite so placed. Okay, um, when I'm happy with that, I'm just going to let it dry 
um, before I remove the stickers. I just want to make sure that that underglaze is uh, dry enough for me to remove the stickers. So I'm just going to stick the uh, the rounder back in the top just to stop that from remembering that it wasn't round. And I'm just going to give that underglaze a couple of minutes to dry. Uh, and then I'll show you briefly how I uh, do the other design. Right, so that's dried um, a little bit now. As you can see, the dots are still a little bit wet. Um, but I'm just going to peel off the sticker carefully. Um, I have come slightly out of the boundary of the sticker. Um, so I can clean that up if I want to. Again, I'm just going to take that one off and that one's going to come off too. Um, so we can get rid of those. And then you're left with your image uh, in front of the trees. Rather nice. Um, I'm just going to spend a minute just doing a tiny bit of clean up um, on the bits where I have overlapped. Um, but that is that that way of doing it. So you put your slip on, you put your underglaze transfer on, you put your masks on and then take the underglaze away and then dot your underglaze colours with a sponge over the top. Uh, so that's now ready for bisque firing once I've just tidied up these little sections. So the other design uh, with the deer's uh, in the back, in the foreground um, is done very slightly differently. So I have um, prepared some mugs with a blue background. So again, this has just had two coats of the blue slip added, um, and it, it's dry. So it's, this is still greenware, but it's it's dry. It's not um, it's not wet any longer. So we're going to use that. And uh, this time we're going to use the stickers the other way around. So um, the first thing to do on this design is to put the stickers on. So we're going to put the stickers on first. We're going to leave the stickers on and paint another colour of slip over the top. So this time we are using the positive image of the stickers. So I'm just going to take this stag off of this um, backing carefully because obviously I can use the other image as we have just used. So that one I can use the other way around and this one I can apply to this mug. So again I'm just going to work out where he's going to go and stick him on. Smooth him down. Sort his antlers out. And again, I need to make sure that those are down. So I'm just going to check that there's no way that anything can get under that. Just make sure that the antlers are down and that they're not peeling up. This mug is a little bit wetter than the, the one we were using earlier. So it's slightly easier for the image to actually stick. So that's the stag on. Uh, I've got a doe facing this time. So she is now facing the stag. So I'll pop her there. And again, just make sure that I've got that down actually onto the surface of the slip, just using this rubber kidney carefully, just to make sure that that's down across the sticker. And then I'm going to put another dough on the other side. Right, so that's the images on. Uh, and try and remember where you've put them, um, especially if you're using a lot of masks. I mean, obviously on this I've got three uh, masks, but if you're using smaller designs, 
um, you'll need to remember where you've placed them because we are going to have to take the masks off later. Um, so just remember where they are. If you need to perhaps take a photo or a short video uh, just so that you know exactly where you've placed your pieces. Right, so having got those on, I now need to decide what I what colour I want my top slip colour to be. Um, so on this one, I've obviously got blue underneath and green over the top, which works very well. Um, but I thought that I would use this um, sort of slightly paler uh, violet slip um, on this. So I've uh, prepared my slip. I've got a slip brush and I'm now going to paint the slip over the top of the blue slip so it won't show through. So I'm going to use this violet coloured slip over the top of the blue slip. Now when I add the slip obviously again I'm going to be rehydrating this piece so I need to be careful not to squeeze it. This slip is quite liquid so I'm just being careful uh, that um, I've covered the blue because obviously the blue is a stronger colour so I'm just going to add one layer fairly rapidly I don't want to uh, let this, this pot soak up all this water because it's going to uh, start moulding itself out of shape as you can see the slip isn't sticking to the stencil because of course the stencil is plastic so you can kind of see where they are. I can clear up the um, messy slip application just make sure I've got a layer on. Right I'm going to put this down carefully and then do this section by the handle. I've just popped a single layer on at the moment I will repeat that when this is nearly dry. Right so this has been sat drying for the time it took me to have a nice cup of tea. Uh, so I've put a second coat of the violet coloured slip on there. I've got a little tiny bit of tidying up to do um, as you can see. Um, you can also see that where the vinyl stickers are the slip is um, obviously not as thick so you can see where they are. Um, so what I'm going to do now is add the um, tree underglaze detail uh, exactly the same way as we did on the others um, other than I'm just going to be careful where I'm placing this because obviously on this particular design uh, the deer are in front of the trees so I want to sort of leave the head details if I can between uh, the slip um, so I haven't got sort of tree detail across their heads like I have on this one so I'm going to be a little bit more careful with my placement um, so I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes or so just popping this underglaze transfer on in exactly the same way this time we're going over the top of the stencils and then we will take the stencils off at the end so I'm just going to right so I'm just double checking that um the transfer's got enough water on it, but not so much water that it's going to smudge. Um, the um, slip on this one is obviously slightly wetter, um, so I'm not having to add quite as much water as I did on the drier green background right. mug. Okay, and then I'm going to peel off the, actually before I do that, because obviously I don't want to touch the underglaze transfer once um, it's finished, I'm just going to check um, whether I've got any bits of mucky slip that shouldn't be there. There's a little bit, if you can see it, on the underside of this handle where it's just dripped through. That will show. Um, once it's actually fired. So if there's any bits of slip that you don't want uh, on the piece, this is the time to do it. And as I say, I tend to do that when the transfer is still on so that I'm not going to be um, pulling that transfer or smudging the transfer when I'm uh, moving the piece around to get rid of uh, bits of slip that I don't want to be on there. Just remember that when it's fired, that slip is going to be a much darker colour 
um, and it really will show. So if you've got any little bits on there that you don't want, uh, make sure that you take them off at this stage. And again, I'm just going to check the rim and the handle from the top just to make sure that there's nothing on there that I don't need. And then I'm going to peel the uh, underglaze transfer off again back on itself you can see that it's not stuck to the stencil of the deer underneath so be careful because you will have wet uh, underglaze on those sections there so I'm just peeling this very carefully just picking up an edge with my nail folding it back on itself just to take the stent the transfer off very satisfying removing underglaze uh, transfers and the last one carefully there we go now on this piece remembering we had three deer you can see them because you can see the pink of the vinyl underneath um, so I'm going to be very very careful uh, I'm actually going to use my scalpel but the blade is dirty so I'm just going to clean the blade uh, I'm just going to use my scalpel just to pick up uh, an edge of the stencil being careful not to smudge the underglaze uh, transfer actually on the slip so I'm just pulling up the side of the stencil and pull this up gently and carefully and remove and now just before I finish you can see that's just lifted the slip just a tiny bit so I'm just going to push that back down with my finger just so that I haven't got a sharp edge okay and then that obviously reveals the blue slip of the deer underneath so I'm just going to take the others off do that again so find find the edge of the stencil and just lift it carefully and then peel it back it comes away quite easily but again if I show you there it's just lifted that slip up so I'm just going to push that down just because I don't want a sharp edge there and that is fine and then the last one is the stag and again I'm just going to find the edge of the stencil and flick it and then carefully peel it. I'm peeling it purposefully so that when the head comes I can get the antlers off easily because obviously they're the important part of that particular stencil and again I've just got a tiny bit of lift um, and there's just the smallest I really am being picky but then I am picky the smallest bit of purple slip just there where I didn't want it so just checking again that that is not leaving me with a sharp edge and there you have it so that's the deer standing in the foreground with the tree detail behind um, so yeah there we go Okay, so um, that's the designs finished both ways round. So this is the green one. This has dried a little bit more in the time it's been sat on the table uh, with the deers and the underglaze. And then the other one, which has the coloured slip underneath with the deers in the foreground. So these obviously now need to be bisque fired. Um, and then I will just glaze them with... Uh, my normal transparent glaze which at the moment is um, Mako's brush on transparent um, and then they'll come out uh, in a kiln opening in a few well a few times uh, once I've got them through the bisque and then in through a glaze firing so I hope that you enjoyed that um, I hope that it's given you some inspiration to try layering with slip and using underglaze transfers and indeed using vinyl stencils in your work and that you can basically 
do any type of design by layering up and having the colour coming through from underneath. It's a really fun project and I hope you enjoy trying it yourself. If you give this a go, don't forget to send me a picture via the website. The link's in the description box below. It's always great to see your pieces when you've done a tutorial from my channel. Uh, don't forget to give us a like and a subscribe and I will see you all on the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.